they first come in, we will strip them. So basically that's just uh, manually removing a couple of streams of milk just to make sure it's okay um, before we put the milkers on, check on the site if anything that looks abnormal. Um, and also that encourages them to let their milk down before the uh, milkers actually go on. And then we spray them with a teat disinfectant, which is just iodine, um, to clean it off and then we wipe it with a towel. And then every goat gets her own milking cloth. Um, and then she'll milk, we wash the hoses and we pay attention to the size of the udder. And once she's done, this is a valve that turns the air off. So when you go to disconnect, you turn this valve over so it's not um, suctioning anymore. And then it just comes right off. So it doesn't hurt her or anything when that happens. And then once all the goes are off, then we'll go around and spray them with iodine again. And then they're good to go back to their pen. That's the first thing you want to watch. As she milks out, it will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, especially for goats with bigger udders, they kind of go a little wrinkly when they get empty. So you can do that. You can also wash the milk that comes down in the claw itself. We call this the claw, it's just the pipe. Um, how fast it's moving and if there's milk still coming out. Because sometimes you can see her udder is kind of unbalanced, so she's milking out a lot faster on this left side, so it's actually almost done. See how it's kind of shrunken down, whereas this side is still milking. So for this goat, you might want to take that side off early, so that way it's not still vacuuming when there's no milk to pull through the line. And then you can also watch the main line here. I prefer to watch this because this line, you can see there's no more milk, whereas this line is still milking. So in that instance, I would just remove that side so it's not sucking on her side that's dry. I'm just putting all the milking cloths into the wash cups. So there's a three cycle wash that runs um, after you're done milking. So the first is just a rinse. So it'll rinse all the lines of the milk. The second is an acid wash and you have also have a soap wash. So it just sterilizes all of the milking lines so there's less bacteria that stay in the lines and then go into the milk. So that way every single time that you come to milk the goats, the lines are completely sterile. So that's the agitator, it spins around in the milk that just to keep the milk moving so it helps keep it cool. Um, it does have a cooling system in the tank because the milk has to be kept cold at about 38 degrees. Uh, so that's two total milkings that are in the tank there. So right now we're only milking um, five pens of goats, which is 32 in each pen. So that's why there's not a lot of milk in the tank, um, but that will increase as we get into March, April, and May when more kids will be arriving. Then I'm just adjusting the dials to turn the system over from milking uh, vacuum pump to wash vacuum pump because it's a little bit of a different setup. And the same with the plugs that sit in the tank. There's short ones for milking so the milk can pass through the line. And then when you go to do the acid wash, you change them to the uh, long versions just to make sure that that soap can't get into where the milk goes into the jar. And then when we're finished milking, we have to take the milk pipe out of the tank 
um, so that way when the system washes you aren't putting chemicals into the milk tank. Um, so I just remove that pipe and it goes into the um, wash jar. So as the system washes it fills up the jar with hot water so by taking this milk pipe out and putting it in there it also cleans the milk pipe so it's sterile and sanitary for the next use. And then we're just reattaching that elbow so the chemicals can flow through the pipe and make sure it's completely clean. And then we just take the hose to make sure all any spilt milk is rinsed off the tank to make sure it's nice and kept nice and clean. So someone from West Meadow Creamery will come out and collect it every three days and we will have to do a chemical wash on the tank once it's emptied um, and that just kind of resets it and so it's nice and sanitary for the next three days worth of milk. It's very important with your milk houses and parlors to make sure they're nice and clean. So we just make sure the floor is rinsed off and there's no excess milk or dirt that's spilt anywhere. So there's um, what we call a milk sock. So it sits on this filter essentially and needs to be changed after every time you finish milking and after every chemical wash. Um, so basically you want to check the sock for any evidence of mastitis or unusual milk, um, it just kind of gives you a heads up on any kind of mastitis or whatever that would be found on that sock. So you change it before the system washes because it will go through that filter again and there's no point in using a dirty filter. So that's the point of changing that. And those are just seals that help keep the filter in place. So you remove that and we just discard the old one and put a new one on. There's milk inspectors that will come out to the farm just to make sure everything, all our processes are being done correctly and we're keeping everything as sanitary as possible. Because uh, obviously the ultimate goal is to have very low bacteria counts in the milk. Our milk is pasteurized over at West Meadow Creamery anyway because that will remove any bacteria because it's, no matter how clean you are here at the farm, there's still going to be bacteria in the milk so that's the point of pasteurizing. Um, so our milk inspectors will come out and just make sure that those processes are being followed appropriately. It just is a third party source that doesn't have a connection with the farm to make sure that, you know, legally everything is going correctly. We use two socks every single day and that's just in the goat parlor. We use three socks down in the robot barn for the cows because we have the same, well it's a similar system. The socks are a little smaller and there's actually two filters in the robot barn, but so that's five filters a day. Um, and that's just, that's not counting any acid or just detergent or anything else that we use on a regular basis. So all those little things behind the scenes really do add up. All the hidden things that you wouldn't even know about that go on every day at the farm. So. And then on that box, there's three dials. So one is off, one is milk, and one is wash. So whenever we're getting ready to put the wash on, we'll turn it from off to wash and then just hit the start button.